it came from outer space to fill the world with terror. What earthly power can stop this terror? That's the signpost up ahead. Your next stop. The Bloodhounds. From outer space. Nerdiest sport, you think? Baseball? Absolutely, yes. It's all about numbers, sabermetrics, stats. Moneyball. Oh, Jonah Hill, Moneyball. Huge nerd. <laughs> he <laughs> was. True. And he crunched those numbers, and they did not win the World Series. Yeah, they had a chance. But they blew Look it. Look at the Astros this year, dude. Same fucking thing. But we're all in agreement baseball is the nerdiest sport. Yeah, I guess so. Bowling? Pretty oh. nerdy. R.L. Stein was a good bowler, so <laughs> then that's got to be a nerdy sport. What about poker? People watch it. People also <laughs> watch porn. Does that make it a sport? It's a little Bopo action. You know what else people watch? Godzilla. And speaking of, that's what we're getting into tonight. Once again, it's the podcast from outer space. Your boy, Rob Scott. We got Adam Narlock, as always. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening. AKA Teabag. We got Ryan Scott in the house tonight. Greetings. And as previously mentioned, we're talking about Godzilla. Yes, uh, we are talking about Gojira today, as it was originally titled in 1953. And November 3rd, oh, 1954, excuse me. November 3rd marks the 63rd anniversary of the release of the film. So, it's uh, an odd anniversary. Well, I mean, November 3rd, that was not, that was last week. Uh, so this week, we'll be getting into the uh, history and lore of the Beast himself, discussing uh, his impact on sci-fi, the 1954 film, the 98 film briefly thrown in there, the 2014 film, also get into the classic rivalry with King Kong, and discuss the upcoming Godzilla vs. King Kong film to be released in 2020 with... None other than everybody's favorite, your girl Eleven. Yes, Millie Bobby, Millie Brown. Bobby Brown confirmed to be in the new. Actually, she's in the new ooh, Godzilla, ooh, ooh. not the new King, not King Kong versus Godzilla. That's my fault. You think those are coming out back to back? Um, the so there's a Godzilla slated for 2019. That's with uh, Eleven, Homegirl, and then Godzilla King Kong is 2020. They're just knocking them out left and right, dude. Now, right off the bat. Got ass. Godzilla, King Kong. Who we got? Who do we like? This is a poll on our Instagram, by the way. We'd love to hear your feedback. So far, about 50-50 of our uh, legion of listeners. The good news is someone's going to have to break the tie out of the three of us. All right. What do you got? I think the smart money is on Godzilla just because of his size. But if you had to ask me, I think I'm going King Kong. Now, are we are we talking about if they're fighting each other or just like who are you picking as your favorite? Like yeah, like who's wise? your favorite and who who do you got in the fight? I think you're. I thought you were asking like from a fighting. I'm standpoint. asking both. Ooh, I think Godzilla is cooler, but I think that King Kong could fuck him up because he's just he's a littler guy. He can jump around a lot. He can do things Godzilla can't do. He can fucking climb in like the up. damn Empire State Building. Yeah, David and Goliath. Who won that battle? That's true. It's a fictional story. What do we got? I got to respect King Kong. I mean, 1933. It's got a little more history to him. I like Godzilla, man. He's a dinosaur. How the fuck do you beat dinosaurs? <sighs> What's cooler than dinosaurs besides peeing your pants? Well, that's what I'm saying is initially I like the dinosaur aspect of it also, but I think if it comes down to it, King Kong is probably going to win. Now... See, I'm thinking opposite. I think Godzilla's going to win, but mm. I like King Kong. He's my fave. Your fave of all the monsters? Yeah, King Kong's boss, dude. Boss Naz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Godzilla, you know, he's got that fire breath. Fire. Yeah, so um, Godzilla first appeared in... Oh, also, you know, Godzilla, obviously, of Japanese origin... And um, none of us speak Japanese, so bear with us on these names because we're probably going to butcher them. No disrespect. Um, yeah, the character first appeared in Ishiro Honda's 1954 film, Gojira, released in November 3rd of 1954. 
Now, uh, creation credit also goes to Tomoyuki Tanaka. Uh, he was the producer of the entire franchise. And Iji Tasubura, who is the uh, special effects director and co-producer. This was all under the Toho label, correct? Yeah, this was all under uh, Toho Studios. After his release, uh, Godzilla quickly became a worldwide pop culture icon, appearing in 29 films produced by Toho, uh, three Hollywood films, countless video games, novels, comic books, and TV shows. And often referred to as the King of Monsters, a phrase first used in Godzilla, King of Monsters, which was the Americanized uh, dub version of the original film. So um, a little background on the creators. Ishiro, the director, born in uh, 1911, passed away in uh, February of 93 at age 81 due to respiratory failure, RIP to homeboy. Uh, He attended film school at Nihon University, uh, and this was uh, pretty interesting. Uh, I was like reading about his time at the school, and um, when he enrolled, it was the school's pilot program. So, uh, a, like a ton of his classmates dropped out, but he just used the canceled class periods to just watch films and take <laughs> notes, like in the back of the school. That's the dream, right there. Yeah, and he was actually drafted into the army upon graduation and served. Uh, like three tours uh, they kept calling him back and um, he was actually a POW for the later half of the war and it wasn't until after so he was away for uh, basically the entire war and Hiroshima and Nagasaki and when he got back is when he saw the destruction the devastation um, before going on to correct Godzilla and that will play a big pivotal role in the development of Godzilla and um Tanaka, the uh, producer, born in 1910, also died in April of 97, age 86, of a stroke. So again, pour one out. Uh, After graduating, he took a job with Toho and began producing his own films after only four years with the studios, and he would go on to produce over 200 films in the 60 years he was with Toho. And uh, Tasubura... The special effects guy, he was born in 1901, uh, died in January of 1970 at either age 68 or 69. They don't actually know his correct uh, birthday, Um, so that's kind of a ballpark range. And uh, during the Second World War, he created a number of propaganda war movies, which uh, were promoted by the Japanese government. In a film that depicted the Japanese attacks on Pearl Harbor, he used special effects skills to replicate the attacks with models, and the footage was so realistic that it passed off as real in American propaganda films. And uh, during his extensive 50-year career, Tatsuburo worked on around 250 films, including the original Godzilla, multiple sequels, and he is credited with the, his hugely popular Ultraman series, who would go on to fight Godzilla in the TV show later. But uh, his special effects were revolutionary at the time, and even used by countless sci-fi directors uh, for years to come. Still, yeah, like you said, uh, George Lucas used that in Star Wars. You see it a lot in uh, Power yeah. Rangers. I remember growing up watching that. Yeah, like a lot of uh, the the model stuff was used in in some of the like early sci-fi films. You know, models, uh, the whole suit motion thing. Kind yep, of guy dressing up in a suit to suitimation. There you go. So yeah, originally called Gojira. Um, he gets his name from Japanese words for gorilla and whale due to his size, power, and aquatic origin. So inspiration for Gojira himself was the beast from 20,000 Fathoms. Uh, if you haven't seen that, just Google a picture of it. Uh, 20,000 Fathoms monster, almost identical. It's like a giant lizard. And a fathom, if you don't know what that is, is like a measurement of depth of the ocean and um just like godzilla you know uh this inspired tanaka along with an event called lucky dragon five do you say this uh just google it for the week the Twenty Thousand fathoms yeah that could uh, go up there under just google it we've also got one in this segment i believe but um yeah lucky dragon five this was um 
So this was a crew of 23 men on this boat that was named Lucky Dragon 5. I am not going to try to pronounce the Japanese name <laughs> of it, but uh, it got contaminated by nuclear fallout from the goddamn US of A when uh, off of Bikini Atoll. That's God how you would say that? Jets. Bikini Atoll, yeah. 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 Uh, that's like a famous island where they did the uh, nuclear bomb testing. Another, just Google it for you. Nothing um, to do with bikinis, by the way. Yeah. Google uh, Bikini Atoll. Like everybody has seen that iconic mushroom cloud and the uh, the nuclear testing off the uh, coast of Bikini Atoll. And um, the crew suffered uh, ARS, acute radiation syndrome, for a number of weeks after the uh, test. They were actually um, outside of the declared danger zone. But this uh, test, it was... Um, it ended up being like two times bigger than the, the U.S. government thought it would be and ended up destroying a number of U.S. vessels. And uh, the winds had shifted that day, so like all the ash and nuclear fallout uh, contaminated this fishing boat, which was a tuna fishing boat, and that tuna actually got out to the population. And this was like before anybody knew anything about like nuclear bombs, nuclear radiation. It was still in its testing phase, but only one of the guys died. And um, in treating the rest of the crew, they accidentally infected them with hepatitis C through blood transfusions. And um, yeah, this event is cited with uh, Tanaka's inspiration um, for the film because, you know, Godzilla is basically a metaphor for like nuclear destruction. Basically took <clears throat> took turns representing the different fears of Japanese people throughout different eras, you know, starting in the 50s, fire bombings during World War II, atomic bombs going off, destroying towns, constantly earthquakes uh, going on in Japan. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure it was Tanaka who said it was it was um like Godzilla was always just about like that first movie was about the fear that the Japanese people felt um, during Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And um, the actor in the original suit, like we were talking about, the Sudimation, uh, they used that because it was quicker than, like most of the monster movies were stop motion at the time, like the old King Kongs. And they said that that would have taken way too long. They only had a, a few months to shoot the movie. So it would have taken like seven years. Yeah. That's crazy. So they were able to, you know, quickly get all the shots they needed and uh, do it super effectively. And um, the actor in the suit got inspiration from uh, watching gorillas and other animals at the zoo. And the this is interesting. The musical director, this is just like uh, Carpenter's Halloween. The uh, music became a very important last piece of the puzzle in the film. And um, the musical director was even uh, tasked with developing a sound, like a voice for Godzilla. And he went to the zoo, but that proved to be useless. He said he didn't. He wanted Godzilla to sound like not natural. And um, so I'm play a clip from the uh, from the 54 version and tell me what you guys think it is. <laughs> That was the original Godzilla call, if you will. Any ideas on the what we call. think that was? I mean, it obviously sounds like an animal, but I know what it is. So. It sounds like, like creaking stairs or my grandmother trying to get out of bed in the morning or something. <laughs> yeah, so the uh, musical director said they used a modified stand-up bass. Tip it on its side and chalo, you've got a bass. Uh, he says they, they loosened one of the strings like as loose as it would go and they just kind of scratched the bow along it in a very unorthodox manner to uh, recreate that sound. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but I was reading online that they also <laughs> messed around with putting on a rubber glove and dragging it across the base as well. I think I read something about that too. Yeah, probably. They did, They did. Like he said, they did a bunch of weird stuff to they get that sound. They were probably just fucking around with the base all day until they found something creepy. Slapping the base? A slap at the base. So, you know, Godzilla's had obviously a huge impact on sci-fi movies as a whole. Um, I mean, I would say he's he's pretty much like the original monster, like created out of the whole nuclear energy, you know, like that mm -hmm. whole aspect of things. The culmination of Japanese fear. In yeah. The 50s. Yeah. Pretty crazy. 
Um, I mean, honestly, it has gone beyond just the sci-fi genre, dude. Got Charles Barkley dunking on him in the Nike commercial back in the day. Drinking some Dr. Pepper. In the 80s, yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, Iconic monster, dude. Yep. Also, uh, Rugrats, Reptar. King Kong ain't got shit on me. And uh, like we were saying, the pseudimation was also uh, revolutionary. And um, when the film was originally released, it was Gojira. It became. It didn't become Godzilla until after being picked up by an American distributor, and uh, they actually filmed extra scenes with Raymond Burr, uh, and they like intercut them with the original. This was similar to what they did with Power Rangers, if you're familiar with that backstory. Oh, we're very familiar with that. Yeah, uh, if you don't know, like Power Rangers was actually bought in America, and it was like a failed Japanese TV show, so they just they kept all the fighting scenes, but they filmed the acting scenes with American actors so they could actually do it for super cheap. They made that show, which went on to become like one of the most popular, um, I guess, children's shows of all time, would you say, right? Arguably. Yeah. And, but yeah, the original, like all those fighting scenes were just from like a, a failed Japanese uh um, don't say that. Movie. Real quick, I think it's important to note, uh, during the Allied occupation of Japan starting in 1945 at the end of World War II, Toho Studios almost went out of business because the Allied occupying forces put restrictions on movies in order to westernize and democratize Japan. So in 1955, this is the zenith of Japanese film industry. I mean, these guys started cranking out almost 500 movies a year. Like, these guys were excited to get back into the game, basically. So this plays into that whole um, being picked up by an American distributor. Uh, so yeah, this was like right after uh, World War II. And since God... Gojira was so popular in uh, Japan got picked up and they thought they wanted to cut these scenes in because they thought like uh, being right after World War II it, it wouldn't be accepted well if it was a strictly Japanese film so they wanted to Americanize it and that's where they dubbed it Godzilla instead of Gojira so that's where it gets the iconic name from and um this is probably the one that most people have seen is the is the version with Raymond Burr. And then, um, you know, we'll briefly talk about, uh, I mean, Godzilla franchise as a whole got pretty weird throughout the uh, 60s and 70s. Um, and in one of the documentaries I was watching, like they talk a lot about how it started off as, uh, you know, as for adults, it was scary. It was a thriller. You know, there's like people getting blown up cities getting destroyed kids getting killed yeah this was not a movie for kids that first one yeah this was like a go to the drive-in with your date you know and uh and eventually <laughs> you know it evolved to uh more and more for kids and and it even got picked up as a tv show and became like uh godzilla became like a superhero like they talk about how his he went from looking uh, less like a monster. His eyes changed and would get like more round so that they could like humanize him. Uh, they showed him with Son of Godzilla. Uh, he even did like in some of the TV shows, he did like a little jig <laughs> at the end of his fights, you know, like uh, it was almost like a comedy, you know. Big inspiration for Barney. <laughs> yeah. And uh, oh, it, very similar, you know. It's basically <laughs> like Barney fighting all these crazy uh, monsters. Yeah, it's a happy dinosaur jumping around, dancing yeah. around, and uh, <laughs> looking creepy. Real quickly, in the uh, documentary, I was watching this guy. Forgive me for the name, uh, Kin Pachero Satsumo. <laughs> uh, he played Godzilla from '85 to '95 on the Japanese TV circuit and he described his techniques for getting into character he would just like he would try to like amp himself up he's probably doing coke this and guy's he, a badass yeah this was the this 80s guy's badass. Uh, he would just like practice mar martial arts in this back room and just swing this wooden sword back and forth and get himself ramped up for hours he said like yelling Godzilla and uh slapping himself on and that's weird. imagine like walking in to tell him like <laughs> hey we're ready for you and he's just like god yeah. swinging yeah. around uh swinging around a wooden like katana sword and, and uh punching walls he says you can even see that like in when he put on the suit it was like really hard to breathe and he'd be doing the same thing he'd be like moving his arms and like straight motions like this all came from his uh martial arts training 
and and but yeah going back to like the themes of godzilla um in that documentary uh one guy mentions that you know godzilla became the the embodiment of violence and hatred for mankind because he was created by atomic energy and uh some people say is he's like a symbol of the personification of uh, mother nature fighting back you know and i think he does he symbolizes like our own destruction of the planet if you will like you were saying it goes from japanese fear to like more about pollution and stuff i think you weren't you saying whatever was the big issue at the time yeah absolutely and uh wonder if that'll play into the new one dude like global warming north koreans i mean yeah probably um and one of the other guys um said this thing i thought was interesting he was saying how like godzilla is a symbol of like our own ignorance because like we create him with stuff that we don't know about atomic energy so we can't destroy it and yeah none of our missiles or our bombs or anything will destroy him so yeah little uh food for thought godzilla now is there a particular reason why they changed it and i'm honestly asking this from godzilla to godzilla you're an asshole that man literally just explained it yes so we'll rewind a little bit for you after this was right after world war ii so no one's gonna watch it just because it's japanese name that's yes. it i mean they literally had japanese people in POW like pow camps, camps, camps in america you think they're gonna go watch gojira straight up japanese well i'm not saying like the straight up japanese film like i get that (laughs) the american people bought it out i'm just saying the whole basis on them changing the name was they just wanted it to be americanized yeah Yeah. pretty much like they wanted to appeal more to an american audience which it did fricked up dude and it did would you go i liked it (laughs) would you go watch a nazi movie right after world war ii i'm asking you seriously I wouldn't. I don't think anyone would. That's what I'm saying. Maybe Trump, some Trump supporters might. Oh, why do we always got to get political? It always comes back to the two Ps, politics and porn. All right, guys. Now, we'll get, them. now we'll get into the uh, Godzilla revamps. Uh, so a little tidbit we found. Um, actually recognized by Guinness, not the beer, the world record uh, <laughs> company. <laughs> world record company, would you call them? Wait, they're not the same? Are they? You're fucking with me. <laughs> Guinness Book of World Records. Is it Guinness it's not, beer? not the same as the beer company, bud. I'm willing to bet dollars of donuts. All right. Well, maybe. Uh, we'll look it up. Yeah. Just Google, Google it. it. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Recognized by Guinness World Records to be the longest continually running movie franchise. Um, it'll be 66 years with the two slated for 2019 and 2020. 32 and, uh, films in that time frame, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think even more than that. That's crazy. Um, But yeah, so 1956 was uh, Godzilla King of Monsters. This was picked up by and Americanized into the Godzilla that we all know and love. Um, 1962 marks the third film in the Godzilla franchise. Um, This was King Kong vs. Godzilla. And this is the one that really, you know, launched the franchise. And uh, again, we're not going to go through every Godzilla movie. Just these are the ones that we pulled that we thought were the biggest, most important. Um, 1964, we get uh, Mothra versus Godzilla, which I think Mothra is probably one of the one of the bigger uh, monsters in in within the franchise. Wouldn't you say? Oh yeah, I mean, he starts off as this like. Is it a he or a she? It's, I think it's a he because I, I believe it starts off as like a caterpillar god. A capitula. And then there's like, a capitula. <laughs> and there's like two women <laughs> controlling him. Yeah. Like eggs or something, right? Yeah, They're yeah, like little like space that. eggs. But uh, a little weird. They do their battle and everything, but then later in the series you see Mothra is kind of like an ally of Godzilla. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. And Mothra is not even like, isn't it just, it's like, just in that uh, vessel, it's like a other like worldly entity, isn't it? Something like, like that. it's almost like a god. Um, but then, so 1964, we have Ghidorah, which is the uh, three-headed monster, very iconic. And all of these, uh, King Kong, Mothra, and Ghidorah, all of those uh, versus movies were direct by directed by Honda, who did the original. And even 1975, we have the return. We have uh, Honda to direct the Terror of Mecha Godzilla, 
Which and again, uh, you were saying is like one of the bigger ones too, you think, right? I, I feel like that's a reflection of the time. You know, you got all this technology coming in and people are freaking out, panicking. Robots. Robots, dude. Going back to AI. <laughs> Nothing's as cool as dinosaurs though, man. But now you got a robot dinosaur. A robot dinosaur. Still not as cool, dude. OG so, uh, dinosaur. Way cooler. A lot of uh, releases and fine-tuning Godzilla as a hero geared more towards kids. And then um, in 98, we got homeboy Roland Emmerich, uh, who directed homeboy. the... Um, I believe this was the first full Hollywood production of Godzilla. And... Um, this was essentially America's take on the 1954 film. This was America's version of Godzilla. You know, instead of destroying Tokyo, he's running around New York City. Um, and yeah, Roland Emmerich uh, directed Independence Day, The Patriot, 2012, Day After Tomorrow. A lot of uh, apocalyptic type movies. You Very know. much so. Patriot? Well, That's the not end of that one. one. <laughs> Budget of uh, 135 million and its box office earnings were 350 mil, so did well, I would say. Now, what do you guys remember from this one? The 98 one? Yes, I was actually shocked to find out that um, T Bag over here has never seen it, correct? What? Dude, now, listen, what's that story? Listen, dude, that movie was <laughs> so badass when I was a kid. I bet it was. Listen, listen. I remember it came out on VHS and uh, my mom rented it from Blockbuster. I had a whole bunch of friends over. We were all going to watch it. And Thanks li- for the invite. Oh, this was when I lived in Washington. And 98, man. <laughs> Came out in 98. It was on VHS. Probably took like a year back then, dude. Do you guys remember that? That I didn't know you. Hey, let the like dude tell his story. 2000. Okay, so you're sitting around. You got a bunch no, of friends not even over. Say, I'm not even sitting around. We're out in the backyard running around, goofing around. And not even sitting around. Break my damn finger, so I have to go to the emergency. Which room. finger? It was my right pinky. Oh, so you never got to watch it. Never got to watch it. However, <laughs> we're taking this back immediately. You're never watching it. <laughs> I never got to watch it. Everybody else watched it while I'm at the hospital with my mom. So we're sitting in the ER, and there's this lady next to us. <laughs> I, just, I don't know why it was so funny at the time. Maybe I was delirious. This lady somehow managed to slice her hand open on a paper shredder. Jesus. Dude. How do you do that? How bad was it? I have, apparently it was worse than me breaking a finger because they were taking care of her. She must have been bleeding all over the place. How do you get your hand inside of a paper shredder? Maybe she was watching Godzilla was wasn't paying attention. <laughs> well, breaking a pinky, come on. You could have taped it and just watched it. I could have sucked it up it. to watch the movie. I could have. My mom was freaking out. One time I broke my ring finger when my grandfather was watching me and you know him being old school guy that he is just told me to drink water and tape it he wouldn't take me to get an x-ray and it was like four times the normal size that's not where i thought you were going with that story though now this here's my question he literally like bought him a splint at the store and some tape he's like let's just go home and drink some water threw it at me yeah (laughs) now so you broke your finger yes couldn't watch the movie Mm mm-hmm now, in the 19 years since then, you didn't think, hey, let me see what's going on with that never, monster. Never thought about it once. Bad memories, dude. Okay. Well, is, what, is it something I need to go back and watch? Yeah, you really do. I but see, that. you're not, Probably it's my not going to happen. Yeah, that's definitely my favorite one, just for the nostalgia factor. I just remember the, the poster was just like, one of them was like the just eye. his eye, yeah, and then dude, another one was like just his foot, like crushing all that stuff in New York City. I think I had the book. Like, remember when they made those books with like the pictures from the movie in the middle? I think yeah. I had the book. So, what was some of your favorite parts in it? I just remember it being a fucking badass movie, dude. Getting the toys at McDonald's. <laughs> That was my favorite part of the whole movie, dude. Uh, now, one thing that stuck with me was, remember when the guy, when f- he first comes out of the ocean and the guy's just sitting on the dock yeah. in New York and you just see it like, start to rise? Yeah. Oh, man, that's that freaked me out as a kid. Every time I see the ocean like calm, I just think of that scene. Like, you know, what lies under the ocean? It could be anything under there. Especially in New York. Yeah. Could be Godzilla. And now Maybe. here's what I'm thinking. Gene Reno, remember him? The, the like, French guy. <sighs> Refresh my memory. I guess he's the cryptozoologist. He's got the glasses in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. Okay, I confuse him with Jeff Goldblum. Understandable. <laughs> now, also, this shocked us. No Jeff Goldblum in that? Right, right. He does. You're thinking of Jurassic Park. And... 
Independence Day. Independence wasn't Day. he in Jurassic Park? Yeah, though? but doesn't it shock you that he movie. was this in This is the this? kind of movie he would be in. Yeah, he like. would. He, and with uh, Emmerich. Yep. You know? Uh, well, that's true. But anyways, I think it's because I had the action figure of Gene Reno from Godzilla, <laughs> and I also had a Goldblum action figure from Independence Day, and they looked very similar. Do you, you know? still have those? Somewhere? <laughs> no, I wish. that I remember the Gene Reno one from Godzilla is like one of my favorite action figures. Okay, so moving along from the classic 98 version with uh, Matthew Broderick. Oh, okay, when you guys think of Matthew Broderick, what do you think of? Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. For sure. Also, Inspector Gadget. I'm the only one that thinks of the cable guy. <laughs> that movie just really is ingrained in your memory. Dude. Yeah. Okay, so 2014. That's going to be a good one. We've got, yeah, 2014, Got uh, this Godzilla film with uh, Brian Cranston marks the 30th film in the Godzilla franchise. Um, this was directed by Gareth Edwards, who would go on to direct Rogue One. Great film, by the way. I fell asleep during that one the other day. I'll be honest, <laughs> I fell asleep when I saw it in theaters with this guy. You fell you asleep had already in the seen theater? theater? I do. I feel so relaxed in movie theaters. I always fall asleep. I can't uh, watch stuff. You pay too much. You I get a not, sugar high, and then you crash in the middle of the film. I haven't been to a nice theater in San Diego. I'll show you some out here. Yeah, in Lakeside. No, God, yeah. no. Dude, the one at Mission Valley and Fashion Valley, if you're listening, suck. They're dirty. They're gross. Nah, my boy was telling me about one. You could, like, go. You can order adult beverages. You, like, reserve your specific seat in the theater. Ooh. Yeah. Yep, Where's yep. that at? I think it's down in Chula Vista. Ooh. I'm going to go see Rogue, or not Rogue One. We're talking about Rogue One. I'm going to go see the new Star Wars in there. I'll let you know how it is. Oh, thanks for the invite. You're welcome. You're going to go see that on Christmas Day with your dad. Well, I'm going to see that too. I'll probably fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Did we get too far off the beaten path there? No. Now, okay, so I'm just going to put this out there. You guys tell me what you think. The 98 Godzilla is cooler in my book, but the actual Godzilla in the 2014 looks way cooler than the 98 version yeah and refresh my memory here in the 98 version he does never do the hyper beam or breathe fire he's right? not a pokemon mm, i believe he does do fire breathing but no hyper beam well the hyper beam in the 2014 was absolutely fulfilling <laughs> you might call it badass bro yeah and this one did even better than the 98 version with a budget of 160 mil earned 529.1 mil at the box office. I saw that one in theaters. You didn't fall asleep? No. Definitely a movie that you you got to see in theaters. Godzilla, like that's made for the big screen, you know? 3D one's coming out. Yeah. Can we, uh, I, I see, I have to have another debate settled with our Legion of Listeners. Elizabeth Olsen, yes or no? Just going to leave it at that. Okay. So, yeah. We'll start a poll on the Instagram. We're going to have to. You guys can just dwell on that one. So, also, 2014 one is um, it's the first film in Legendary Studios' MonsterVerse, uh, the second being Kong Skull Island. You guys seen that? In my opinion, way better movie. The, the 2014 Godzilla? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would say, I mean, that's definitely, hands down, probably one of the best movies of 2017. Who? It's a bold oh, statement, man. bro. And the upcoming sequel, Godzilla King of Monsters, set to be released in March of 2019, will be directed by Michael Dougherty. Might know him from Krampus and Trick or Treat. Did you Can actually watch that the other day? Yeah. Was it good? Uh, Worth watching or no? I don't really remember what happened. Talking about Krampus or Trick or Treat? Trick or Treat. Trick or treat. Uh, I, came uh, I haven't seen Krampus though. I was good. I came home. Trick or treat is just like on the PS4, just like paused, and these guys passed out in their rooms as always. So uh, this one will be starring Vera Farminga. Uh, you might know her from The Departed and The Conjuring. Um, Ken Watanabe. Uh, where is he from? Inception. Inception. Yeah, he's Ooh. the older dude in Inception and. Uh, one other badass one in there. I can't remember. I can't remember right now. Uh, Kyle Chandler, Friday Night Lights, and uh, Millie Bobby Brown, our girl Eleven, amongst others. Also, a homeboy from uh, Billy Madison and uh, <laughs> Silicon Valley is in there. Nice. 
Now this one, so Legendary Studios released uh, this description of it. Um, the new story follows the heroic efforts of cryptozoological agency Monarch as its members face off against a battery of god-sized monsters, including the mighty Godzilla, who collides with Mothra, Rodan, and his ultimate nemesis, the three-headed King Ghidorah. Um, with these ancient super species thought to be mere myths, rise again, they'll all vie for supremacy, leaving humanity's very existence hanging in the balance. And this was kind of all the Easter egg. After. Yeah, yeah. Um, if, if uh, yeah, in Kong Skull Island, uh, there's an after credit scene where they're, uh, they take them into like this secret uh, government thing and the, and, um, the cryptozoological zoological agency monarch is like showing them all this like info on Ma you got mothra rodan king Ghidorah, all the classic monsters and godzilla's in there and you know this leads us right up to october 2015 legendary announced plans to unite godzilla and king kong in a film titled Godzilla vs. Kong, set for a May 22nd, 2020 release date. Uh, don't know much about this one yet. Uh, they, uh, Legendary says they plan to create a shared cinematic franchise uh, centered around Monarch, the cryptozoological group, that brings together Godzilla and King Kong in an ecosystem of other giant super species, both classic and new. This is Ollie versus Frasier 2 right here, isn't yep. it? Yep. This is the heavyweight bout. Yeah. Fuck McGregor Mayweather. This is where the money's at. Um, money fight. Yeah. Money team. The money. And, money uh, team. Who would you say is uh, money team? King Kong Ooh. or Godzilla? Godzilla. Okay. Because King Kong's kind of the underdog in this fight because he's a little guy. All right. Well, we're going to get into that. We're going to do a little uh, Kong Godzilla debates. Him but just a little guy. But, you know, first, we're going to kick it over to Rob for now our Tale of the Tape. It is time. Fighting out of the blue corner, standing approximately 150 feet tall, weighing in at 1,400 tons with an undefeated record of 9-0. Fighting out of Skull Island, Indonesia, the eighth wonder of the world, King Kong. Fighting out of the red corner, approximately 350 feet tall, weighing in at 164,000 tons with a professional record 29 and one. Fighting out of the Pacific Ocean, Godzilla, King of Monsters. Okay, so let's get into it, guys. Um, what do we hope to see? What do we think's gonna happen? Um, what do you got? Who do you guys got in the fight, the heavyweight bout of the century? Do you know you want to know what I want to see? What's what that? you want to see? I want to see Godzilla and King Kong beat the shit out of Rotten Tomatoes. Fuck those guys. <laughs> Only gave the original King Kong versus Godzilla a 33% rating. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. You can't, yeah, ro Rotten Tomatoes. If you are one of those people that goes on Rotten Tomatoes. Cynical just, assholes. Just stop, you know? You don't need to do it. Just go to the movie. If you see a movie that you like, don't look it up on Rotten Tomatoes. Just go. Rotten Tomatoes is essentially Yelp for movies. Yeah. It's, it's like, you're going to look this up. You're going to see what all these other assholes are saying about it. You don't even need to watch the movie anymore. You're going to miss out on possibly the best movie you've ever seen. Yeah. Just because Rot Rotten Tomatoes told you that it sucked. Okay. And usually Rotten Tomatoes suck. Okay, so In fact, just, they always um, do. Now, here we go. So uh, our tale of the tape, you know, that took uh, me and Adam did a little, uh, little research today to put that together. Crunch some numbers. Yeah. So in the original, you know... Um, 1954 film. King uh, of the Monsters. Yeah. Godzilla is coming in at 164 feet tall. Now, that's not even Savage. tall. Yeah, that's not even as tall as the Capitol building, which stands at 289 feet. Um, mm. In the 98 and 2014, he's somewhere around 350 feet tall. So uh, that's about as tall as Big Ben or the Statue of Liberty. Uh, those are both around 300 feet. 
Uh, now, King Kong in the 33 is 25 feet tall. And then in, in uh, yeah, he's a, for yeah. a monster. That's what I'm saying. He's also only 25 feet tall in the 2005 one with Jack Black. But in the 2017 one, uh, Kong Skull Island, he's around 150 feet. So he's about as tall as the OG Godzilla. And uh, so with the bout happening in 2020... Um, this will be their second bout, first being in 1962. So yeah, let's get into it. What do we think? Uh, what do we think is going to happen? So, uh, you know, Godzilla is almost 350 feet tall in in the 2014 one. So he's he's about three times the size of uh, King Kong. But then again, Kong Skull Island was happening in the 70s, and this bout is taking place in modern times. So do we think? You know, he's just out on that island eating acai bowls and pumping iron. He's at the muscle factory every day. Yeah. Just Conor so, McGregor. And, yeah, he's, he's going to, you know, he's got to go up and wait. Well, is classes. he using steroids or not? I don't know if that's sanctioned, but probably not. <laughs> they gonna they gonna drug test him before the fight? No, definitely not. He's going full Brock Lesnar. Ooh, no. going in juiced up. Yeah. Here's my thing. In the first fight, <clears throat> and then we got to settle this. And the first fight, if I remember correctly, if I recall correctly, I had heard that too. Um, Godzilla's winning. He's kicking the shit. He's whacking his tail, doing some flying jump kicks. Whacking his yeah, tail. he's all he's like burning uh, the area around. He's trying to catch uh, King Kong on fire. But you know, he's King Kong's playing defense. He's playing Money Mayweather. He's slipping and sliding. You know, he's he's Dancing dodging around. the tail. And uh, Godzilla's winning this fight. Yeah, clearly. Yeah, clearly. At first. At first, but, you know, then they're kind of knocked into the ocean, and Kong is the only one that comes up. And he swims back to his home island while they think Godzilla just went back down in the deep. Put so, that ass to sleep real proper with the fishes. Yeah, now we count that as a loss. That's why we put that stick on uh, Godzilla's record. But Godzilla- <laughs> We count that as yeah, a loss. But Godzilla clearly has more fighting experience than Kong. You know, 29, dude. Yeah, because 29 movies where he's fighting other monsters, destroying cities, Godzilla, only nine. So he, you That's know- King Kong. King Kong uh, yeah, King Kong, only nine. Yeah, but I'm saying, dude, He's got that, Godzilla's got the size, but he's going to slip up, dude. King Kong's fighting for a lady. That's true. That's another thing I like about Kong. You know, he's a ladies guy. He's doing it all He's for just going to dip right between Godzilla's legs, trip him up, lights out, dude. Now, also, one thing that we did not put in our tail of the tape, you may have noticed, uh, for you fight fans out there, <laughs> age. That's going to be a significant factor. Mm. So we are saying Godzilla is clearly older. He's supposed to be well, he's a diner, you know? So yeah. Kinda, he's, went in the, we don't really know how old we he don't, is. Yeah, we don't no, we know how old he is. We can't put a number. He's a mythical creature, if you might might say. Yeah. And, uh, so, but I mean, so is King Kong. And yeah, you know, strength is the last thing to go with age. So, he's, you know, Godzilla is still going to have that size advantage but you know he's severely lacking in the age if he's a prehistoric beast and if kong is you know just pumping iron on skull island getting big getting jacked getting juiced he's kills. already jacked dude yeah i'm saying undefeated kong's got this one dude i'm going king i'm team kong oh team kong is that a new hashtag yeah we agreeing with that Adam? we're making shirts of that next it's it's hard for me to pick against the dinosaur okay well, we now, gotta get, get a little friendly wager on this before the movie comes out. Yes. Yeah. Right here on record, ten That's bucks side bet. Gentlemen's you bet. Get money. Money team, dude. <laughs> I should have known that's where you're going. I'll buy the beers. How about that? Let's go, guys. Come nice, on. Nice little bottle of Johnny. Okay. Red. So what? You got six Kong? Pack. You got six Zilla? Pack. I six got pack a Godzilla, man. Old age and treachery. Now, also, he's got that hyper beam. Don't matter, dude. You think he's going to make money Mayweather him? Slip that beam? Yeah. You bet your sweet ass he is. And that that's another thing, you know, uh in watching both films, you know, Godzilla is a he's like a big scaly creature. So he's not as agile, he's not he's as fluid dinosaur. in his movements as uh Kong. New terms of the bet. When Godzilla wins, 
No, when he wins? <laughs> when he wins, you have to dress up in a Godzilla costume, stand on a corner, <laughs> chase <laughs> Asian kids, and stomp models. That's racist. Stomp yeah, like, models? Yes, like a model city. I'll build the damn model city if I have to. Oh, I thought you meant like female models. Whatever he wants to stomp. That's assault, brother. <laughs> So, if King Kong wins, you're dressing up in a gorilla suit, spinning a banana out on the corner. That's and racist. you're going after any blonde girl that walks by. Yeah. All right, I'm you're chasing down. them. I'm down. This will be on. This will be the first video we put on our uh, YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel. You sure you don't want to just do a, a six pack on this? Both. I'm going to drink that six pack while I'm harassing blonde. Yeah, you're going to need that six I'm pack need in it. that costume. Everybody okay, heard it yep. here first. Yep, you heard it here. You heard it first. What if it's tied? Then what do we do? Yeah. Well, okay. Here we go. Then we. Both what if have to it's dress like? Up. What if it's like the original where <laughs> Godzilla goes back, Kong goes back, but Godzilla was kicking his ass, but Godzilla still ran away. I count that as a stick. That's a loss. Godzilla didn't run away. King Kong ran away. He went home. He sw- he just came up and and was swimming around. Godzilla could have fucking got him. He's in his own turf water. Yeah. But why he's didn't just- King Kong stay under there? Stay on. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he keep fighting them? They First fought, off, there was said, a little divine intervention. No divine intervention. Oh, do sex machina. You know what I'm saying? He gets struck by the lightning bolt. Had you know it revolted him and amped it up. That was his Brock Lesnar, his John Jones steroids. That's you know? not going to happen this time. They can't. Probably not. I think it's, it's, it's going to be the other way around. You'd like to think that. Nah. <laughs> so you don't have to dress up in a gorilla suit. This is going to be classic. All right, guys. So you heard our thoughts. Let us know what you think. Uh, hope you're excited as us about the upcoming film. Um, we'll probably eventually do a uh, King Kong episode, you know, a little closer to the film debut. Um, just get into the whole lore of that. Rob's Team Kong. Adam's Team Zilla. Team G. Where are you at, dude? Let us know what you guys think. You know, if I'm betting on it, what do you think the odds would be in Vegas on this fight? You're a bookie. You are a You're bookie. You're making the odds. Money line bet. What do we got? You think Minus, it'd be- minus 325 Godzilla. Okay. So, wow. All right. What would Kong be then? Plus 300. No. <laughs> so three to one odds for uh, Kong underdog? Yeah. Okay. I could see that. I would I would even give uh I would say Kong's more of an underdog. I would even go as far as plus like five. plus five. Maybe plus five fifty. No way, dude. Yeah. He's plus tiny, 350. Man. Maybe opening odds if we start it right now. All right. Well, if I'm betting on it, I'm gonna go Godzilla, but I'm pulling for I'm I'm Team Kong all the way. You know, now that we're talking about the odds, I think we're fucked because check this out. What they're gonna do is let Kong win. So they can make more King Kong movies, because Godzilla's already going to have a bunch. So I he already does them. have a bunch. Too. Or they're going to, but do there's a, way more Godzilla movies. What they're there. probably going to well, no, do. That's what I'm saying is Godzilla already has like what thirty. That's what 32? I'm saying. So King Kong's going to win this one. I just fucked myself. And they're going to do a trilogy fight. This is like a Nate Diaz Connor type situation. Every like nah, twenty dude. years, they're going to do a trilogy fight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let us know what you guys think. Um, Anything else before we get out of here on this one, guys? As always, check us out on Instagram at Podcast from Outer Space, uh, Podcast from Outer Space at Gmail if you want to shoot us an email. Um, yeah, and uh, help us out. You know, feel free to uh, help get the word out, get some followers. Uh, we got stickers coming soon. T-shirts um, coming on the next episode. I'm gonna give you. We're gonna just give the stickers out for free, and uh, I'm gonna give you guys uh, instructions on how to get some stickers from us. And, uh, yeah, see you guys on the next episode. Thanks so much for listening. Peace. You know, I just wanted to throw in a little spot. If you guys get some time, we put out these podcasts for you guys to give you some thought-provoking ideas. Go back if you get the time. Watch some of these videos on your own time. Let us know your comments. We love interacting with you guys. I know we've gotten some messages on uh, Instagram. Had some cool conversations with some cats. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. But, uh, yeah, guys, thanks again for the listen. So long, and thanks for all the fish. Oh,